Hello, I'm Pam Hoffman, Everyday Spacer. I'm Jeff Miller, 20, 2049 Outfitters. At Everyday Spacer, we show regular folks how to personally and directly participate in space exploration, science, and astronomy. We're here on Friday nights at 9 p.m. Pacific Time, 12 midnight Eastern Time, and 12 noon on Saturday in Hong Kong. We're broadcasting live from Thousand Oaks, California. Tonight's topic is submit your, your photos of the night sky. We'll be back in 8.3 seconds. We'll chat about astrophotography and places where you can submit your photos of the night sky. Pam, what do you have for us tonight? Well, episodes, episodes like this are always meant to pique your interest, so you can dive into this as much as you wish. There are many ways to take this fascinating world of space exploration, science, and astronomy. I wrote over 300 articles on my blog starting in August of 2012, and then I turned some of those articles into a book. It's called Your Amazing Itty Bitty explore space now book 15 simple ways to personally and directly participate in space exploration right now in this first book i included an additional activity and an advanced activity setting up the next two books and they would be 15 additional activities as well as 15 advanced activities to make three books in the series i have done so many of these things the one thing i have not done <laughs> I introduced in the first book under chapter one. Oh, I have another view of that book. Here it is on Amazon. Oh, and Cliff. Hi, hi Cliff. Hi, Cliff. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, and I think we took a little bit of inspiration from you and your, um, your Pomona Astronomy Club. You've always got wonderful images to share with us. All right, so... Uh, so the, in this first book, it's the advanced activity, which involves astrophotography. Uh, you know, I've tried to take photos of the night sky and a few things are starting to look pretty decent sometimes. I'd really love to learn how to take decent photos of the moon through a telescope or capture the beautiful summer sky looking south from our observing site. We basically can see the, um, center of the galaxy as well as the teapot asterism and Scorpius, all really, really wonderful. Uh, and there are some really cool opportunities to submit your photos to various sites. I'll delve into the ones I found while I was getting ready for tonight's episode. Uh, have you sent your images anywhere? Or do you know about these sites that you can submit your photos to? Uh, the first one I learned about was um, quite some time ago when I was putting together this book and it had to do with astronomy picture of the day. Of course, I knew about it for a long time, but what I didn't know was that you could in fact submit photos. And I think I found out about it just browsing around. Yeah, submissions, probably on that link right there. Anyway, here's today's, that's pretty spectacular. It's the double cluster in Perseus. And kind of recently, I found out about the Earth and Sky community photos. Now, they want really recent photos, uh, and they want them to be really good technically, uh, show something beautiful or interesting our whole community can enjoy. You don't want to submit more than one photo a day, though. So kind of like when you um, sign up for a competition or a contest, you want to follow all the rules very very to the letter don't don't mess up with this they'll just eliminate you based on messing up the rules uh, so yeah one per day per photographer and they want only the very best sunrise or sunset photos will be published uh, no overly exposed suns or mutes it's really easy to do especially with the moon at night and we will not publish photos that show unprotected views of the sun or sunspots please do not view or photograph the sun without proper eye protection. Absolutely protect your eyes. Yeah. And there's... Well, the, the question there is, 
how how would a photo even turn out if you took an unprotected <laughs> photo of the sun? You I mean, might just, ruin your camera, actually. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would imagine just, well, look, there's this really big bright spot somewhere. Like, yeah, actually, when uh, we went down to the total solar eclipse in 1991, <laughs> uh, our friend uh, Bob, he did ruin a camera doing without a mm. filter on it. Yeah, I see the, I see the link. But, yeah, hi, Daniel. Um, hi, Daniel. He says, hi, spacers. Are most or, or all sky photos kind of automatically public domain? Oh, no. No. Oh, no. If you're on astronomy picture of the day, anything, I'm going to go with most anything, let's qualify that, uh, that NASA adds to the site is in the public domain. But you will see in this case, I've got a copyright, and it says Martin Frosch, and a link to this person's website uh, let's actually go there that'd be kind of fun to see oh, i probably should do this so you get more image instead of my browser so this is this person's site and they have copyrighted their photos oh yeah talks about their first nasa astronomy picture of the day picture great question thank you daniel so uh yeah we we have all kinds of uh different people i think you can actually yeah see this uh, link here index you can pop around to a bunch oh that's not the one i was thinking maybe it's the archive page you can pop yeah here we go see all these different days they had a really good one for fourth of july that was really beautiful uh you can actually pop around and see and you will see this copyright upon occasion yeah and yeah, and just so you know, for your own photos, right if you take them, the, anything that you pu publish anywhere is automatic, automatically has some form of copyright on it. It might not be as stringent, mm. um, and it might be easy to get around, but there is an assumed copyright. And you could certainly, you know, claim that this is a, in the public domain. Yeah. There, I've seen you, some you other people. You can give up your copyright. Right. You can, you, can, you can tell everybody this is in the public domain, and then they can use it. Or um, Creative Commons, which is yes. a good way of doing it so that people can use it, but they can't make money on it without paying you money. Oh, that's how that works? Okay. Yeah. I haven't figured that out yet. Yeah. Yes, Cliff. you do, Cliff. Yeah, thanks, Cliff. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, so let me go back over to here because this looks like a pretty easy form. They want your name, email, website, or Facebook page. It doesn't look like that one's required, though. See the little star behind them? Location is required, though. Date, time, equipment details, post-processing details, image upload. Tell us about your image, terms and condition. And I think this is, yeah, personal work, JPEG or PNG. You're going to say something? Well. It's interesting that of all of the things that are required, the describing of the photo is not required on the on here. Yeah. So you know they want to they want to see the equipment that took it, but equipment and location. It, yeah, but description of it. Eh. Well, I think people will put that in. I know. I just, I just, I just like to see what what are the things that they consider important, and you can see because they're required. Got it. Yes, that makes sense. All right. So, oh, you retain ownership and copyright of your photo. So definitely read everything in here. Make sure before you hit the submit button that you have, in fact, done all the things that they want you to do. Uh, and they have, I'm not a robot. Uh, and you can subscribe. And I actually get this one every single day. So, yeah, pretty simple. Uh, but they do want you to fill in the form. And they have each, to submit at the bottom. Yeah. Each, yeah, submit. Each time you do a photo, you have to fill in the form. However, yeah. you know, if you have your browser set to autocomplete on forms, it mm. reduces the workload. Hey, Janie, thank you for joining us. We're so glad oh, you're here. You oh, thank you. Hope you have a healthy weekend as well. Right. Absolutely. Uh, so these were really the only two I knew about before I decided to do this episode. So I went and did a search and let's see, my search term was it's somewhere over there, submit astrophotography. So that's what I did. And here is what I got. So what I did was I just opened up all of these links. And like I said, this is not an exhaustive <laughs> examination because there are some other pages 
included. So let's just take a look. And, and this is really the first time I've been to them today. Uh, you know, NASA does accept uh, photos or videos. And I know they have some audio as well on their sites. Um, but yeah, you want to. Thanks, Jeff. You, it's a small print, so I figured I'd make it. Yeah, easy yeah, one. that's that's good. Great. All right. So you want to absolutely read everything very carefully. Make sure you understand what you're doing because uh, they do, you know, mention rights, that kind of thing. You want to know what you're doing, what you're giving up or keeping. And I don't know exactly where this one goes, but of course, Astronomy Picture of the Day is also a NASA site. Uh, Scott has a comment. Hey, Scott. Um, I do like the beauty of night sky photos, but I really like the idea that there could be something new to be discovered in a photo like a super nova or an asteroid oh very yeah. cool looking at photos that someone else took yeah to discover new things yeah i like it so yeah definitely make sure where it says you know you have to have it you fill that in and follow every single thing that they want you to do uh because i mean they'll even yeah up to 100 megabyte in size yeah only and, jpeg yeah yeah and look at look at the photo details yep too because you will get an automatic bump if it's um if it's not the you know not the right size not right. the right format yeah you don't want to be illuminated because you forgot a, a little detail like they have in the in the fine print here yeah and you, you give them a t you know a gigabyte size tiff file and <laughs> yeah that you might not yeah get the no on. there's it'll go nowhere all right and then i found some some good commercial options like submitting Photos to Sky and Telescope, and that's a, a popular magazine in the astronomy world. So, uh, yeah, there's some options here. Like some of them are just for NASA and fun, but some of them are actually for these these commercial. Um, and I don't know if they're going to pay you, but they do have a lot of these, you know, frequently asked questions. So, uh, again, read through everything very, very carefully. Make sure and be really thorough when you submit these, these actually pop down to another spot on the page. So I'm just going to scroll through a little bit and then go down to, so what kinds of images are they, look, oh, are they looking for? Well, Sky and Telescope compensate me for holding on to my image. That's, that's the, you, you asked, you don't know if they pay you, but that that's, and do I retain the copyright to my public? Yeah. Image? I'm sure all that information is going to be in here somewhere. I see Daniel's got a comment too. Yeah. It would, it's, Daniel says it would be interesting to be served a court summons by by the night sky. What? <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, what kinds of images? They will tell you. They'll spell it out for you. What they're looking for, what they want, and what they don't want. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. People observatories will not be considered unless they're submitted as part of a proposal for an article to which they are relevant. And they talk about. Yeah. Scott. Scott says, Daniel, that would be a seriously important course. <laughs> summons. I love this. Thank you so much, both of you. So glad you're here and <laughs> that the discussions the, are fun. That might be the celestial court, right? <laughs> yes. How do I submit my images? They talk all about it. Yeah, they talk about email. And all of them are going to be different. The, the, some of them have, have had forms that we've seen and a way to download. It looks like you send this one by email. All right, what's next? Uh, yeah, through submit your images through our image submission form. Okay, they've got a form. Uh, so it sounds like it, they could go either way with this one, email or their submission form. Mm -hmm. What information should I include with my submission? They want you uh, to have cover letter with your complete contact information and details of your image, the kind of telescope or lens, camera, ISO settings, all, all kinds of details. They want to know it all. So I guess it's, I guess it's, uh, let's see, are they actually different by gallery submission versus email or mail? Hmm. Oh, it looks like the gallery submission, you're okay not to send details. You're not comfortable sending. Okay. Where should you send the pictures? That's the mail near Cambridge. How will I know if my images have been received? They can only acknowledge images that images that have been chosen to be published in a pending issue. So if they're not going to publish it, you won't hear from them. 
that's very typical of a lot of yeah. magazines. Yeah, again, and they, they just receive a volume of them, and it's too hard to respond to every single one. All right, so will they pay me for my pictures? Except for those featured in gallery, amateur astro images used in the magazine are paid for according to the size at which they are produced, unless reproduced, unless they are commissioned along with the text of an article. A copy of our payment rates is available upon request. Payment is initiated upon publication of the pictures. So you could do this for fun, and you could try to do this for money, especially if it's with an article. It sounds like oh. for them, that's kind of where the money is, an image and an article. What else do I get uh, for the use of my images? I get credit. Do I retain the copyright? Yes, you retain full ownership over images. Uh, they'll send you a release form. It's called a publishing agreement, which you must sign in return before we can publish your images. All very, very good stuff. What if I change my mind and decide to withdraw my submission? You should inform us in writing as soon as possible. Do you play favorites? <laughs> you open to all contributors. A very good question. Uh, when we do our initial selection of images for a particular article, we don't pay attention to the names of photographers. We base our choices solely on the merits of each image. Well, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. This is especially true for a gallery department. So it does sound like they are a little different. The reason you see certain photographers' names appearing repeatedly in our, in our pages is that they submit images to us on a regular basis. Remember, we cannot publish your images unless you send them to us. So... The moral of that last the moral of that story, send them images. Mm -hmm. I was told you plan to use one of my pictures when? Usually within a few months, maybe more, owing to the limited number of pages available in a given issue of the magazine. We cannot publish all the superb images that we receive. Even having your images accepted for serious consideration doesn't guarantee that they'll get published. So they really spell it out for you. They've done this for a long time. And they know what they want, and they know what they want from you. They know what they want you to do for them. And every time someone makes us think about something, they get another paragraph to this thing. <laughs> I imagine so. But, again, they've been around for a long time. They probably have worked a lot of that stuff out. Mm -hmm. Or they've just said, you know, yeah, we're not going to deal with this person. Uh, so they will not pay holding fees for the images that have been put on file with the photographer's consent. And there's a way to ask questions if you didn't get your answers here. What's the end of this? All right, just the end stuff. So then we go over to this Welcome to Astro Bin. And this actually looks like it's a little bit different. It's kind of more social media for astrophotographers. Uh, so it's a, a place to submit your photos, but it's not going to be in like an astronomy picture of the day page or a magazine, it's going to be for the pleasure of the members of the site, it looks like. Yeah, Cliff says, in most cases, if you give it to them, it is now theirs. Ah, well. Which, which is why a lot of these do spell out that you retain your, because yes, that, that used to be very common, Cliff, mm. um, for um, for anyone to, to basically own anything that you send to them. But um, I think enough lawsuits will have fixed that. No. Well, no? because it was spelled out in their terms. Yeah. Um, right. In this case. Right. No, but it was before, too. But I think with the advent of the web and things being so easy to publish mm. that it just, I think there was too much stink made about that sort of thing. And so it's become culturally less likely to happen. Oh, okay. Um, you know, so... You know, now if you submit a photo to Harper's, yeah, they, they own it. You submit a photo to one of these, you know, Sky and Telescope, they actually spell out that, nope, it's yours. Right, yeah. And we saw that with the astronomy picture of the day, too. They they let you retain the rights to your photograph. Mm -hmm. So I only came across this for, for this episode, so I don't know too much about it yet. Let's go ahead and let's scroll down, see what we can see. So, oh, they tell you about it. Oh, since 2011, the number one complete solution for image hosting of astro photographs. Far from being a generic run-of-the-mill image hosting website, it was created and is still operated by an astrophotographer and boasts features that are very specific to astrophotography. This sounds really cool. Take a tour. Oh, I'm going to climb on the cookies just to get that out of the way. Okay. And they got some videos for you to watch. 
what else is here? Oh, maybe they, let's see. Uh, get feel. Maybe they will actually help you learn more about taking better photos. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. I don't know what this means. <laughs> Shot kit? Okay. They talk about the camera. Well, people are saying, okay, so they got some testimonials. Salvatore has done a great service to the community by creating Astro Bin and by maintaining it for so long. I thank him for all his efforts and everything he's done to promote astrophotography. This looks like a really cool site. Oh, okay. Let's see. I have my images on a couple of other sites. However, Astro Bin provides a unique service. Considering all the money I've invested in this hobby, I have the ability to host all my images, including technical data, and to check others' images, including their technical data, without much work on my part. It's well worth the subscription fee. Oh, all right. So that's the first time I've realized that there is a subscription fee. Uh, so this person talks about being here since almost the beginning. And it's a great community. Okay, cool. And you can read some more. Oh, even before running a telescope. That'd be a great way to learn about stuff. See what other people are doing and what, what equipment they used. Oh, nine years young. That's probably been a while, though. I don't know when. Well, 2011. Now, what is that? 12 years? 12 years, yeah. All right. So, oh, look at the Pleiades. That's one of my favorites. All right. What else do we have here? Not just, oh, okay. So, it's all testimonials, and then you got the about at the bottom. So, I would say if uh, you really want to get into this, uh, check out Astro Bin. And see what it takes to sign up and how much it costs. Oh, you got a free trial. And uh, does it last for a little while or is it just, uh, oh, oh, wow. <clears throat> you can um, pay by year and it's $1.88 a month. That's a really good deal. So really not too, too much money. It's pretty, pretty low as far as a subscription goes for a site. So, hey, Cliff, you might want to check this out. All right, so, and there's probably a couple more things in here you want to look at. Uh, I, I would I would look at anything like this very thoroughly before you actually sign up for it. Mm -hmm. So just so you know what you're getting yourself into. Yeah, and definitely do the free trial first, I would yeah, think. Yeah, I would say try, uh, go with a free trial just to, to get a feel for what it is and what you're but you, you know what they can do for you. Yeah, because if it's just an empty shelf, there's no point in giving them your credit card. Yeah. All right, and this is something I found recently as well, and this is it's really small over here, but it says astronomers, astronomy picture of the day. So that's A A P O D. Amateur astronomer. Amateur astronomer. Yeah. See, it's really small. I can't even read it now. And here is today's image. So it looks like regular folks are taking photos. And submitting them to this part website aepod2 uh, to get published and they have the information about the photo and where it was taken and, and the filters used i'm off at 10 coast italy yeah all kinds of interesting stuff and you can go see the res resolution image uh so they've got a couple of places you can go and sign up for the newsletter and that's that one but again i didn't know about this oh it looks like they got some other stuff here too i will let you look into those image archives submissions their blog uh if you're into this check it out yeah and see what their policy is on yep. copyright and yep. stuff like that because right um yeah i looks like you can yeah go ahead I doubt that they'll pay you for the image on this Probably site. not. Probably not. Yeah. But, you know, it'd be nice to know if you, if they take your ownership of your image or not. Right. Because you definitely want to know that, especially if you're going to get into this professionally or be very serious about it. All right. So then this is photographing space. We're looking for the best astrophotographers in the world so we can show your work to the world. Submit your images for a chance to be featured as the winner of the photo photographing space.com image of the week okay so it's a sort of a contest thing too quality uniqueness or novelty deep space objects something recent with the within the last calendar year please please do not submit an image more than once 
We will hold on to each entry possibly entry to possibly feature in the future. I think you would just bug them if you if you kept submitting. So keep in mind all the different things that they want you to pay attention to, all the details. Yeah, basically um, don't submit the same image every month hoping to, yeah. to finally become a winner. If they, right. you know, if they think that <laughs> looks like according to this, if they, if someone edges out your photo this month, they might keep it so for, that for in the future, for in the future. Yeah. Yeah. So here's where you put your image. Tell us about your image, title, description, how you got it. Tell us about you. And it looks like everything is required country you're in your website oh not these maybe you don't have those things oh they got astro bin here instagram twitter facebook all the usual places 500 oh, px i haven't heard, heard of that one all right but it's probably like all these other ones and if you know what it is you know what it is and then submit your image so that's cool and let's see uh they i guess they do have how to learn about taking the photographs. Oh, all right. Best Night Sky Photography Resources and Tutorials for Astrophotographers by Astrophotographers. And, well, I would really like to learn how to do better pictures. Uh, and they have a bunch of other pages here. So there's oh, there tutorials. Yeah, to, okay. And have for beginners and tutorial. Very cool. So this would be a great place to start if you don't already have some understanding of this well it looks like with the tutorials even if you do have some understanding that might be a good place because there's always there's always stuff that you're going to miss even if you've been doing it for 10 years oh totally so looking at the tutorials on different sites might like oh hey you can do that too so yeah and i have a couple things up here like books and different things to to look into if you want to get into this and and like I said, I, I would be interested in doing this. So I am probably going to look into this deeper after our episode tonight. All right. And here is the submit an, an image to astronomy picture of the day. Uh, there's an email for it. And you want to attach your image uh, and tell us about the image again. Everybody wants to know about the images. So that's a, that's kind of a standard thing. You're not going to post your image in astronomy picture of the day discussion forum asterisk or the Flickr group to judge relative popularity, which is only one of many decision criteria. Okay. So they tell you what, how they're going to pick your image. And mm -hmm. if you get involved with these groups and you become a popular person there and an image, um, yeah, maybe you'll get, maybe that'll give you an advantage over the other people that haven't done that. Uh, please mm -hmm. note that by submitting your image to astronomy picture of the day, that's a pod what that stands for you are consenting for your image to be used on astronomy picture of the day in all of its forms unless you explicitly state otherwise and it's very important to know this too that, that they will also send these to mirror sites right here uh let's see these include mirror sites foreign language mirror sites new media mirror sites nasa's open api for apod yearly calendars and on social fan pages so yeah do understand that if you're sharing here they may go other places as well and uh, they recommend you include a copyright notice in the corner of your submitted images uh, oh they do accept these composited or digitally manipulated images which is sort of a new thing now uh -huh. um you know they they'll take pictures for very short time periods and then stack them on top of each other to bring out the the beauty of the image more uh, once upon a time we used to take pictures and leave the aperture open so that we could get more light in the camera but that's not as popular anymore um, yeah. but they and, do want you to identify that and composite also includes digitally stitched photos oh yeah that so makes sense if you like take multiple photos in a row then you can digitally stitch them together and have a widescreen. Right. Yes. In fact, I've seen that on APOD where you can scroll and oh, do an cool. entire circle. Yeah. And they talk about who's in charge of it <laughs> and some different things about um, astronomy picture astronomy picture of the day. All right. Moving on, we've got uh, this site. 
Uh, also new to me, where to publish your astrophotography images. Uh, apparently it was a year ago, so not exactly new, but not too old. So um, there's some information about, oh, yep, they mentioned astronomy picture of the day, Wikipedia, Astro Bin, stock photography sites. Okay, that's a good idea, especially if you want to, um, I think you can get a little bit of money from those. Yeah. Fine art sites, magazines and online publication, contests. Yep, read the rules of any contest carefully. They may exclude derivative works, post-process data, or require permissions to be obtained from the source and noted in the entry. And always, always, you want to follow the rules so you don't get eliminated by the rules. Huh. I never thought of GoDaddy as a place to submit photos. Yeah, I never have either. Never heard of Behance. No. And Wix is the is the site that you use for creating the worst websites I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, some of them are okay. Only if they don't use all of the resources on the Wix thing. If you, if you use even half of the resources on the Wix. Lord. <laughs> all right. So what's next here? Uh, okay. And here's a really cool place because it talks about how to get started. And I saw this and I'm like, oh, well, I really got to read this and learn more. So if you want to take incredible pictures of a night sky but don't know where to start, you're in the right place. Astrophotography requires a very specific set of equipment and techniques to accomplish, and it can be overwhelming for a beginner. I'm going to kill this one. If you've ever got lost in the technical specifications <laughs> of a certain telescope or camera and wondered if it will actually perform well for astrophotography, you are not alone. So this looks like a really, really great place to go. Even if you have experience, because I'll tell you, I know I have known things and I'll go through a, a site like this just to make sure that I don't have any holes in my understanding to fill any of the holes that I, I may have not even known I had. So uh, yeah, he, he talks about learning about him, why he's dedicated his life to, life to astrophotography. And the topics. Um, so, yeah, we can uh, go to the how to. What else is in here? Oh, look at that picture. That's so beautiful. That's the nice thing about this. You can really get some beautiful, beautiful images if you figure out what you're doing. Oh, he did not use a telescope to capture that picture. It was a wide angle camera lens yeah. to properly expose the picture and showcase the colorful stars. Oh, Cliff has. Oh. Astro bin subscription plans. The plans differ in the number of images you can host and show in your gallery. Ah. Astro bin free is 10 images free. Um, Astro bin light is 12 images, um, $18 a year and more options. All righty. Well, that's good to know. Thank you, Cliff, for digging into that a little bit. I so, really appreciate that. So for the free one, yeah, you can host 10 images and get a feel for how it how it is to submit. Yeah. But it also lets you look at all the images of everyone else, I would imagine, too. That makes sense, yeah. All right. Very cool. So uh, let's see. He talks about uh, picking subject matter, equipment, simple ways to get started. Yay. Always like simple. <laughs> and uh, he's, it sounds like he's going to go into some of the things that you'll need. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. All right. Well, I'm definitely going to delve into this much, much more deeply to learn. Because I have tried to take pictures and some of them are really crappy. <laughs> wow. Look at that picture. She was an area of interest. Oh, that looks like a, a galaxy. Mm -hmm. Andromeda. Okay. Uh, he talks about, oh, that's a good, nice, uh, nice image of which things are which on this. Types of astrophotography, camera lens and stationary tripod. Yeah, tripod's really good. I've taken some pictures just by holding it and, oh, you know, some of them turn out, but most of them are kind of messy. Oh, look at that. How beautiful. Very cool. All yeah, right, so if I were to try to hold the camera taking a picture of the moon like that, 
I'd end up with a squiggle. Yeah, I have. I try and take pictures of things like Venus. It's usually pretty squiggly. Oh, look at that. Point and shoot camera through telescope eyepiece. Yes. See, I've tried that. It comes out funky looking. All right. I will definitely be coming back here and reading. Oh, I'm not even halfway through the page. So lots and lots of good stuff here. And here is a book that I found. And I thought it sounded really good. And I can actually get a book because I don't really read Kindle very much. So it just they just sit there gathering pixel dust. <laughs> but I did look at this date, 2014. It's a little old. However, probably a lot of this stuff will be similar. I just don't know if I want to get this, though. Yeah, because if they discuss brands and model numbers and stuff like that, those will be different. Yep. I mean, it's been nine years. There's going to be different stuff yep. out there. And uh, I'm going to end here with this. Remember, we talked about it last week. Venus is the brightest now in the evening sky, and that's actually tonight. Unfortunately, I had this link last time. And I tried to get it this time, and it is not resolving properly. So if you have a chance, go outside, take a look up, and see the beautiful, brilliant Venus in the night sky. Do we have any other comments? Not at the moment. So I didn't realize there were so many opportunities to share your pictures that you've taken of the night sky. All right, so you ready? Well, and there's also other non-space resources, um, resources for sharing photos. Well, I mentioned Harper's. I mean, it's less likely that they'll get published, but if it's a really cool image, they might be interested in it. But I'll, some of the magazines out there don't like unsolicited photos. Right. Well, of course, if you subscribe to something like How About Reporter, out H A R O. Um, you might actually find where they're requesting right. information on something to do with. Or, or you just contact the magazine itself and say, hey, I have a really interesting photo of X. Are you interested? If they say yes, they solicited it from you. Oh. You okay. just don't send the photo. Because here's what happens. If you blast the photo out there and some, and it ends up in their inbox for half a year, then they publish it. And then they, and then you say, well, I didn't give them permission to publish it. You know, that's why they don't want un, un, some, you know, unrequested images. Okay. So. Well, good. Thanks for that. Mm -hmm. I don't think I knew that. Yeah. I just am remembering from way back. Um, okay. Submitting articles and stuff. Oh, got it. All right. So you we'll know, look for your comments and uh, yep. do the next segment. Yep, some stellar events this week, July 7th through July 14th. <coughs> Sorry, folks. Um, July 7th, Venus is at its greatest illuminated extent. We just, we, Pam just mentioned that. July 8th, Little Bit Night begins their next project. And um, it runs for. Go ahead, Chair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it runs from for 10 days from july 8th through july 17th 2023 um in the northern hemisphere look for butes or hercules in the summer southern hemisphere look for scorpius or hercules very cool and at the did you want to show anything else about this oh yeah you know um you can use the app to take pictures oh, yes. and submit them to the site. And this is an important citizen science project. Yeah, <laughs> we have different versions of this particular. Yeah, okay. So, um, and Neptune and the moon are in conjunction. Let's go back to us. Yep. Um, July 9th is the last quarter moon, which means that we won't have any more quarter moons after July 9th because it's the last one. <laughs> Uh, we got a comment from Janie Becker. Uh, Oops, oh, I we both it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, fun topic, guys. Sorry to miss next week. I'm off to Young Living Essential Oil Convention in Salt Lake City and the Mona EO Farm. Hugs to all. Very cool. Yep. Well, we'll miss you, Janie. Yep. 
Did you do this one? Nope, not yet. Okay. Um, July 10th, the moon is at ascending node. And July 11th, <laughs> Jupiter and the moon are in conjunction. July 12th, Uranus and the moon are in conjunction. And July 14th is our Friday night show. A spacer anniversary is coming. We'll talk about that in a minute. Find us on <laughs> find us Fridays at 9 p.m. Pacific time on the Everyday Spacer Facebook page and the Everyday Spacer YouTube channel. If you are someone you know has done something interesting involving space exploration, science, astronomy like that, we'd love to share our live. Join us again next Friday, July the 14th, when we will talk about Space Week of old. Once upon a time, it was in celebration of the Apollo moon landing that whole week. Uh, and then I think on the 21st, we'll talk about it a little bit more. We've got some ideas we're throwing around. Uh, but yeah, because it is going to be that whole week, we figured we'd, talk, we'd take two different episodes of the show and talk about Apollo 11 and the things surrounding that. Yeah, All right, you got anything else? Me. Nope. You got anything else? I don't see it here. Nope, I don't either. Thanks so much for joining us, Janie and Cliff and Scott and Daniel. And that was everybody. Yep. We really appreciate you being here. Have a great week, folks. Yep. Stay uh, stay cool. I know it's hot in some areas of the country. Yeah. <laughs> my mom was telling me, and uh, my friend Don was telling me, and Donald was telling me. So, yeah, be careful out there. We'll yeah. see you next uh, next Friday. Good, Good night. night.